Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you uh, my way of tying uh, Mikael Olesen's uh, fly. He's a tie from Denmark and I would encourage you to go and check out his uh, social media because he really ties some exceptional flies. And um, this is my take on his fly. I mean, when I say my take, it's the way I, how, how I tie it. He may tie it a little bit differently, but the end results should be pretty similar. Uh, this is one of the best flies I've seen recently from uh, tires around. And uh, it just struck me like how simple, but yet a little bit complicated it is. Uh, and it sits perfectly on the water. Uh, the idea behind it is amazing. And everything about this fly is just amazing and like screams, I'm gonna catch some fish. So I'm not gonna bore you about it uh, more. I'm just gonna show you uh, why I like this fly and how I, how I uh, tie it. Uh, though I have to say I didn't tie too many of these. I haven't tried them yet, it's winter here, so it's too early for me to try, but I'm sure that this will catch some fish. So, first of all, uh, the tail is partridge. Well, the hook first is 900BL12 by TMCO. Uh, I love this hook, it's just amazing hook. Um, the tail is going to be partridge feather and it's one that's relatively near the tail of the partridge and uh, those barbs uh, extending from the from the rachis are longer there. If you take those, the, the neck feather is not just, in, it's not enough. Those feathers are longer and they are soft. The reason for using soft feather, I talked to Mikhail and he said he, he would like his fly to sit a little bit lower in the surface. My question was, could I, could I, could I use coctelion? And he said, yes, of course, but his idea behind it is to sit lower and it makes sense. As you may know, my favorite uh, form of a dry fly is definitely an emerger and this can be early stage of developing the uh, fly. So this is a uh, footprint, footprint done. That's how he calls it. And uh, it's an amazing fly, you will see. So for the body, obviously, it's going to be peacock barbs. And I'm going to use those longer ones. You can use those near, uh, near the eye. But those, they have those barbules, barbules uh, a little bit uh, bigger, uh, which I don't like. I, I want my uh, the body on this flight to be a little bit less fluffy, but it's up to you. Uh, for the hackle, I'm using my new white knee hackle that I just got recently. And uh, it's light, but you can choose whatever color you want. I, I think that the grizzly may work on this perfectly well um, and for the wing it's going to be CDC and here I have two CDC feathers one is darker as you can see here and it's underdeveloped you can recognize it by this quill part here that still has this uh, I don't know how to call it but it's it's just protecting the, the barb barbs around and you have this fully developed but it's still compared to the hook size as you can see it's not too big the reason behind it is the rachis. The rachis is thinner on smaller feathers. Whereas if you take bigger feather, as you can see, the rachis is as thick as a hook, which I don't like. And uh, this feather and this feather is kind of diamond triangular shape. So when you stroke back all those barbs, they will be the same length as the tip of the feather. Whereas those oval feathers that you can find in some packages Obviously, this one is not good, but this this one is perfect from, for example, let's say you can take some clip. Let me show you. You can take some clip, clip it like this, cut it and use it for a kind of a dubbing, uh, dubbing to a split, a split loop te technique. You can use it for that, for legs, for hackle. Uh, so you remove the, the rakes uh, from this feather. That would be the best application of this kind of a feather. But that's not uh, what we are talking about now. We are using this. And this is my favorite shape for mayfly and caddis wings. For legs and other stuff, it's the oval one that I just showed you. So now, without any further ado, let's just get into tying. Uh, for the thread, I forgot to mention that I'm using Nano Silk by Semperfly. And it's 18 through 0 thickness. 
as you can see here. Uh, color, I would love it to be black, but this one is not black, so for that reason I'm going to use Sharpie and color the thread as I finish off the fly. Uh, before I start everything, I just go take some beeswax. This is pure beeswax, but you can use whatever you have to wax the thread to make it less slippery. And I will start the fly somewhere where, my, where I want my abdomen to end. So a couple of wraps, not too many. Okay, let's take one, two more. Just check the, is it, the, did it get the grip properly? If it is, you can proceed with your next step and that's a tail. You can choose whatever, but I will just stroke back and see which one, uh, which side has longer barbs here. Now let me see. So I want it to be overall hook length. So it's going to be here. And I'll just cut it, twist the bobbin holder counterclockwise if looked from above. So my thread jumps over those barbs and catch them. And then I can proceed and tie in the rest of those barbs until, well, up until where I want my body to end. Okay, that's it. Now, you can use five, six, seven barbs, but this is something that fish will eventually destroy. Now, for the body, I'm going to use peacock barbs, and I'll just strip those three, and I will align the butt ends here more or less, stroke all the way back and then by holding it somewhere by the middle I'll take all three tips and pull and they will break and this that's the weakest point of those. I like to break it one more time because you need to re uh, remove the weakest part of those barbs. Again because the, the thread just unraveled, uh, twisted counterclockwise so it jumps or stays neutral. Okay, I'll just catch those barbs all over, creating slight taper here, which is not necessary because these barbs are, uh, well, they're thick. You won't even notice the taper, but it's just something I do most of the time. Now, next thing, um, let me just show you here on, on some wider barb. It's very interesting and you can just play with it. It's kind of a makeup thing so it's not functional but it, it looks good uh, it may look good so when you take the peacock barb and you look for like it from like this from this angle you can see that those little barbels are curving to one side so you can orient them to curve this way so they will have curved side like let me show you like with my finger this way they cup towards this side or they they will cup this side uh, it's like very interesting thing for example if you have a royal coachman you can make first half to cup towards the eye and the other half to cup towards the rear so they make like a oval shape overall so you can play with these uh, peacock barbs they're very fun to, to, to work with and with even one barb you can make it very uh, dense uh, what I like to do because uh, in my mind at least this is like how it should be uh, functional I'll stroke those barbules, barbules I'll stroke them back so this is like a hackle more or less now uh, with those barbules being barbs in this case I mean just imagine this is a feather uh, and the rachis is the, the barb itself so I'm gonna twist it clockwise direction around with my tying thread and by twisting it clockwise, when I start wrapping it around the hook, it will twist even more. Meaning that this thread will reinforce the peacock barb as I go towards the front part. So I'm going to wrap this clockwise direction and hold both thread and the barb together. So try not to, uh, well, you can tighten on it as as much as the barb is strong so 
it's not the thread that dictates how much you can put pressure on it, it's the barb itself. So I'm stroking those barbels back, making them a little bit more dense, as you will see. So it's touching turns here, touching turns here, touching turns here, touching turns here, and go on and go on. Okay, now this is a place where I want to stop. So this is my abdomen. The difference between me and Michael, Mikael, is very obvious at this point. Mikael would put the CDC feather first and leave it towards the front end. I like to have my materials uh, more traditional this, this time. But it, it doesn't make much difference because these feathers are short, so it's not going to be in your way. So as you can see, I put three, uh, three barbs here. They are hiding, they are reinforced, so functionality is there. Now we need to put some wings on it. And obviously, darker, a little bit darker and a little bit lighter feather is going to be facing down. The darker is going up, so when I fold those wings this way, I will see the lighter one towards me. Now, where I want to catch it is more or less, let me just measure it. So, tip align with the hook eye, and then a little bit longer than a, than a hook. So, let me just check, is it good? And just, yeah. So, this, what I measured here, should be near the eye. I'll twist my bobbin holder now and I hold it here, transfer. Now one, two, and then tighten. Tighten up, tighten up, tighten up, tighten up, and go upward motion until I reach the eye. And go like literally go into the eye. You want to go like all the way till the end. Now I'm going to cut those butt ends very near and this is going to be aligned nicely. Now at this point I will attach my hackle and the hackle is going to be uh, well more or less one and a half hook gaps. Okay. Now with n almost neutral thread, I'm going to catch it on the side. Okay, and here I'm going to catch my peacock again. Only this time I'm going to use slightly wider peacock barbs. I'm going to do the same process again of breaking the tips twice, or you can just cut it where you want it. Stroke back those barbels. I want I want them to stick out. And here. Okay. Now it's when it's secured, I'll flip it because I tied barbs on the on the top. So I have to flip it and start wrapping it around. Okay. So again, reinforcing the peacock barbs, which are arguably the most fragile part of the fly here. Now leave some room here for the head. You don't need to go all the way towards the, towards the eye. So leave some room for the head and tie off the peacock barbs. As you can see, it's a little bit wider. Thorax is a little bit wider. Now, second difference between Michael, Mikhail, and uh, what I'm doing, I'm always saying Michael because his name is spelled that way, but since he's from Denmark, it's different pronunciation, obviously. I'm gonna color the thread at this moment. Okay. Now, Mikhail told me that he likes to strip one side of the feather to make it less, uh, less dense, but this feather is not super rich doesn't have this uh, barb count super rich so I'll just go like a couple of wraps through the through the bar uh, through the peacock three and 
one more. Okay. I need to return my bobbin holder up. I forgot to do that. Okay, now catch it and go. So you can notice that I'm still staying with the thread away from the eye. Let me just show you that. So eyes over here. Let me pull it to bed a bit again. And the thread is like head length behind. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to pull those uh, barbs and hackle tips up just like this go with one soft wrap second one and I like to hold it with my nails here pull up so keep everything on the top creating a little head over here this nice little head and as you squeeze your thread onto the uh, the rakis of the CDC it will pop up a little bit up, upwards and it will give this the mayfly wing impression. So I'll just pull those a little bit back, not too rough, just to make clear way so I can do my whip finish with flat thread that will allow me to make a nice and neat whip finish knot and it will prevent breaking of the thread because if you do the knot, whip finish knot with twisted thread, it may furl onto itself and by doing so it will uh, uh, catch itself and break. Now, I got antennas here that I didn't want, so I'll just cut them away. Now, final thing to do with this fly is to cut those hackle barbs. Let me see them. Okay. Because they the hackle barbs when you twist them let me show you that okay when you twist them they're not perpendicular to the to the rachis so if you just go here and cut it in the middle being you can see that I didn't create V is that right but if you come inside and take a look closer of the direction of those barbs you will see that well i need to do it a little bit more extreme here yeah you need to go from this side here and cut from this end to this end and it will uh, make one nice one nice uh, flat profile from un down under so i'll just do this i'll lean my scissors tip on the on my t uh, thumb just to make it more stable accurate okay I didn't catch them all and a couple more then yeah that's it so what I just did I created a V profile over here that will allow this fly to sit lower uh, lower in the surface film and that's why it's called foot mayfly footprint done well footprint done uh, and a couple of legs st sticking out of it just making that footprint more realistic peacock being almost a magical uh, magical material will just reflect and do its magic and fish will definitely bite it bite it as you can see it has like nice prominent head that's maybe the thing that bought me when I first saw this line that's just that attention to detail that Mikhail has uh, and his flies uh, it, it all has some function over there so please uh, check his channel out and tell me what you think guys thank you very much for watching uh, I hope you like this fly uh, if you did please give it a like share subscribe and see you next week